Good morning. I'm glad you were able to join us again today for day number two. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 3 today. Um, I'm kind of looking into this and I, I just... I see some amazing things for us to, to kind of focus on today. Yesterday we focused on the fact that God chose us to live in these times. Today we're going to look at just some guarantees that God gives us. In verse 3 it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. I, I, I love this because... When we look at it, it's it's God's in, in God's mercy we were born again. It takes us back to John chapter three, where Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus, and he says, uh, "You you must be born again." And Nicodemus really doesn't quite understand what Jesus is talking about there. I mean, it it is a very confusing concept for anybody who who really doesn't truly understand what salvation is all about. But Peter here is explaining that in the mercies of God, in, in, in what we didn't deserve, but God chose to give us. He chose to see that we were born again. We, we weren't born again in the physical sense, but we were, we were made alive spiritually. We were born again to this living hope. And I love, I love that phrase, living hope. So what, what does the scripture speak of when it says hope? Well, when we use the word hope, we tend to use it as, well, I hope so, or we, we can reasonably expect something to happen, however, it may not. But when scripture uses the word hope, it's a guarantee. It's so much a guarantee, it's like it's already happened. But I like that Peter not just describes this as our hope, but he describes it as our living hope. So what's our living hope? What's that based on? Well, he finishes that in, in uh, verse 3. He says uh, that uh, his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See, we serve a risen Savior. We serve a God that is alive. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And, and he even says that, that that's not necessarily a remarkable thing. Scripture tells us that, that people die for causes all the time. It's not an unusual thing for, for someone to go to their death, even to save the life or do something good for another person. That's not unusual. What made the, the death of Christ unusual, what made, what made our salvation possible, wasn't just that he died on the cross for our sins, but that he rose again from the dead, and he is now alive at the right hand of the Father. That is what's unique. That's what's different. And that's what gives us the guarantee of eternal life. Because if Christ died then all we have to do is face death. That's all that's left for us. He may have conquered sin, but at that point he wouldn't have conquered death. But see, praise God, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And he conquered death. And through his death, we can have life again. That's a wonderful guarantee. But see, Peter doesn't just end there. He goes into verse 4. He says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that doesn't fade away, reserved in heaven for you. I love this. It's an inheritance. When we're born again, we're born again into God's family. He gives us all the rights there too. An inheritance is something that you don't just give to anybody. Uh, we kind of live in a world where the government would love to take all of the inheritance away from us. However, you really have in your mind, whenever you have this, this thought of what's going to happen to me or what's going to happen to my, my things, my physical things, after I die. Well, I want them to go to a particular individual. I want them to have this inheritance. I want them to be taken care of. Well, that's the same idea that we have here in that 
we are now born into the family of God and we have certain rights, certain privileges that are given to us because now we're not looking on the outside. We're not looking to take something that doesn't belong to us. We're now in the family. And that inheritance is something that is incorruptible, something that cannot, cannot fade away. It's, 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 it's undefiled. It's holy. And that eternal life, that, that uh, wonderful time that we'll have, we'll have for all eternity in heaven, that's been given to us. That's our living hope. That's our surety. And the amazing thing is, we can trust in that. Why? Verse 5, it says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. How can we be guaranteed that we'll have this inheritance, that we have this living hope, that it really is ours when we're born again into the family of God? Well, we can be sure of it because, like verse 5 says, we are kept by the power of God. If you truly believe God is who he says he is, then you believe that God is all-powerful, that there is nothing that can defeat him or his power. There is nothing that, like Romans chapter 8 tells us, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Our spot in heaven, our reservation in heaven, as, as uh, verse 4 tells us, is guaranteed, not because of anything that we did, not because of anything that we say or that we pray, but because we are kept by the power of God. I hope that you're trusting in that today, that you're being kept in the power of God. Remember, remember, no matter what happens uh, in our world, we are still in, his, in the Lord's family. We are born again into God's family, and we are kept by his power. And he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you again tomorrow.